Hi everyone, welcome to the video. In this one, we're going to be looking at setting up uh, sim links or symbolic links within Batasera, basically to give us uh, the possibility of extending our storage. Um, by default, Batasera um, puts everything in a user partition um, and a ROMs folder, but when you run out of space on that drive, um, obviously you're a bit stuck of where to go. So, sim links is a way of linking uh, an external drive or folder or file uh, to a uh, file or folder on a another another drive. So here's the Batasera wiki. I have lots of useful links on here, um, but we're looking at the uh, this page, this sim links page. Um, explains here exactly how to do it, sort of step by step. But I've had a you know, it's come in conversation and chats a few times around how to do this. So I thought I'd make a quick video um, of exactly how to do it. Like I say, there's there's a few um, guides on here around creating the links. Um, do, yeah, this one's doing a standard link. Uh, and then a bit further down, it mentions about um, actually linking to specific existing folders. So obviously, it's okay if you've got a, a, a create a brand new link. But what we want to do to be able to store more ROMs is actually um, put a link to one of the folders in the existing ROMs folder itself. Um, you could do the whole ROMs folder if you wanted to, but then obviously you know, everything will be on a separate drive. So. Anyway, let's let's just crack on. So here's my Batasera machine running. This it's is a it's a virtual machine. It's running just to sort of demo this. Um, obviously, don't use it playing games. It wouldn't work very well, but it's it's good for for demoing this. Um, so once you're in Batasera, if you hit F, the F1 key on your keyboard, you'll get this kind of file explorer um, type or file manager type window. So this is very useful for for doing this kind of stuff. And you'll see on the left hand side here, um, I've inserted a just a small four gig USB drive. Just for the for demo purposes, but also you can put whatever size you want, um, and you can probably put multiple in there. To be fair, um, obviously it could get a little bit tricky, sort of keeping track of what uh, what shortcutted you know symbolic link to where. But so we're just going to go on and, and demo here. Um, the mouse pointer seems to be playing a little bit, um, jumping about inside the virtual machine. So I'm going to use the keyboard. Um, so bear with me. Um, but like I say, it's um, Probably good if you you, know, you haven't got mouse plugged into your Batasera machine, um, just a keyboard. This this might help. Um, so yeah, I've got the four gig USB stick here. Um, what we're going to do first is come in here and just create a, a folder to, to store the ROMs. If I can find it on the menu, just an Alt F there to bring up the uh, bring up the menu at the top. Right, and normally you'd be able to sort of in the in the window right click and create a new folder. But I need to go to the top if I can just find it. Yeah, it is. So we've got create new folder. So just for consistency, we'll call this ROMs. Uh, and then inside here, we're going to create another folder, and this will be our new folder for for these ROMs. Um, so just decide on a, a system to, to pick. Uh, just pick one of the smaller ones. So like, like I say, you can you could redirect the whole ROMs folder, or just individual. Um, subfolders for you know, per system. Um, probably, you know, probably good ones to move with things like PlayStation, um, PS1, PS2, PS3. Um, they're all they're, obviously they're disc based systems so the ROMs are the games are quite large. Um, so so yeah they, it's, they're probably a good uh, good candidate to move to save some space. Um, or if they're you know that's a system you want to add um, create the folder for that. So we'll have a quick look in here uh, just thinking um, which system to do? So just in the background there, I'll just check in what ones I've got, which ones I haven't. So C128 is the Commodore 128. So let's create a folder here. And then just using the keyboard, and using the tab key to get back. Obviously, if you're using the mouse, it's easier. So this is the standard ROMs folder. Like I say, all these folders are created at install, yeah, and at that time, the yeah, majority are empty, and you drop your games in. So you can see we've got the original C128 folder here. It's just got the standard info text file in it, which gives you sort of, you, if you read those, it's just some basic information about ROM formats and that kind of stuff. So um, what we want to do is create a shortcut in here, pointing to the 128 the C128 folder on our USB drive. So um, you could just delete this, um, but I'm just going to rename it to .old, just so it doesn't interfere. 
And then what I need to do is go back to the USB drive. And go back into that ROMs folder. We'll highlight the C128 folder. Um, if you do right click with the mouse, you get some options, but you don't get the, uh, the create link option. Uh, to do that, you have to go to the edit menu and you'll see just down here, you've got create link. So we want to choose this. So we're basically saying create a link to this folder. And now it's asking us where we want to place the shortcut to that folder. So we'll go to the standard or the original ROMs folder. Just as soon as I figure out the, uh, <laughs> the right button to press to jump across the tab button. So yeah, we're going to go into, into ROMs and this is where we want to create our folder. So it's going to create a, a, a C128 shortcut folder in here, which is why we had to rename uh, the folder originally. So it didn't clash at that. But if you hadn't done it at that point, it, at that point it would pop up um, saying, you know, it already exists. Um, I'm not sure if you can overwrite. I probably wouldn't advise it. Just, you know, make sure, make sure it doesn't exist. So now you see we've got the C128 folder here. It's got the shortcut icon just above it to, to denote that it's a shortcut or a symbolic link to another location. And then when we click on it, this is actually browsing the uh, USB drive. Even though to, to Batasura, it still thinks it's looking at user data slash ROMs. So it still thinks it's looking at original location. So all you would do is dump your ROMs in here, um, restart Batasura or, or rescan the games and they'll, they'll all pop in. So just to kind of prove the point, what we do is we go back to the, the 4 gig USB stick, go into our 128 folder and then just create a quick test folder in here. Sorry, a test file. Just uh, Alt F to get to there. Create a new empty file. And let's call it something obvious like on USB. So that exists there. Now, if we switch back to the original ROMs folder, find our C128 folder. And there you go, you click on it and it's viewing that. You see the address bar at the top, it still says user data slash ROMs slash C128. So as far as Batasura is concerned, it's still looking in the original ROMs folder, the original C128 folder. But behind the scenes, it's redirecting you to the uh, to USB drive. So like I say, you can do that with as many um, folders as you want. Um, so then you end up with, you know, you do that for the ones you want, they end up on the USB drive. The other ones uh, end up in the internal. So yeah, very useful. Hopefully it was handy to people. Um, like I say, it's quite short and sweet this one, but it's, it's quite easy, but it's, it's, it's quite a bit of a lifesaver. I've had it a number of times where you've kind of, you, you're building your system, you're adding more ROMs and suddenly you run out of space or you've got your ROMs on there and then you start scraping artwork. And obviously the more games you've got, the more artwork you're going to have, the more videos, they do take up space. Um, things like save states um, take up space as well. So eventually you, you may you may run, run end up running out of room. So this is obviously like a, a good way to, to do that. To actually give more space so hopefully it's useful um, and just to kind of for completeness if you want to then sort of go back for any reason I'm not quite sure why you would but if you want to you can just come in here and delete delete it as well I'll just quickly show you as well. when we click on the properties uh, I look at the properties of the folder it will show you location so it's sort of the original location of where the where the, the symbolic link starts and then it's target so you can actually see there that it is actually pointing to the uh, USB drive. So like I say, if you'd plugged in multiple drives and you've got a couple of ROM folders redirected to one USB drive, a couple redirected to another, it may get a bit confusing. So you can go in here and check exactly what's pointing where. Um, but that's why it's handy to create on the USB drive, or that second drive, create the ROMs folder and keep the name convention the same, just so that you can quite easily see uh, what's what. And like I say, to, to, for completeness, we're just gonna delete this now. So it says back down to the trash can and there it goes. So now it's gone. Um, but obviously this is just deleting the link. So if you go back to the, the USB drive, that folder is still there and the contents is still there. So we haven't deleted any data or any ROMs. We've literally just deleted the actual link. So we're kind of back to where we started. Um, the only thing we need to do to get us right back to the start is go out to that ROMs folder and then we'll just rename that, that C128 folder from dot old uh, back to its original name and then we're back where we started so like I say yeah I hope that was useful oh, although uh, <laughs> fat fingers just uh, hitting the, the hash key and the return key at the same time 
Mask. So let me just get back and uh, rename, rename that. But yeah, so, so that, that's pretty much it. Um, like I say, it, it should be useful for creating small space. Um, um, yeah, I've done it a few times. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's useful. Um, hopefully um, you liked it. If you do, please please like the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. That'd be great. Um, um, drop a comment. Um, let us know what you think or any sort of hint suggestions or if I've got anything wrong. You know, <laughs> it does happen from time to time. Um, so yeah, uh, and like I said, I've got the uh, Facebook page and Discord as well. That I think I've said numerous times in other videos, it's, it's easier to kind of track comments and reply to comments on there. Obviously, uh, with the YouTube, you can only reply via text. And, you know, I do my best. I think I pretty much have replied to every single comment that I ever get. Um, but then if you then reply a second time back to my reply, I don't always, it's hard to see the notification in the YouTube app. Um, whereas if you have a chat on Facebook or, or Discord, it's easier to follow. And plus on both of those, you can, you know, if you've got an issue or a suggestion, you can attach uh, images, pictures, screenshots, videos, whatever, into those. So it's a bit easier to see what's going on. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully it's useful. Um, nice, quick, easy one. Um, time permitting, I'm going to make the, a similar video for Retrobat, which is obviously you know um, a very similar front end but running on Windows, and you can use symbolic links within Windows. Just a couple different commands to set them up. Um, but yeah, so look out for that one if that's of interest. And yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.